music is gone, but excited I to know, get started. Right? <laughs> Exactly. All right. Hello, hello, and welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. We're so glad to have a great group here this afternoon with us from a little break, right, Ashley? Had a little time off. Mm -hmm. uh, a nice lot summer. of administrators, a little summer break, right? And I know a lot of our families are still off for summer, so they're probably having fun and enjoying themselves. Anyway, so thanks for joining us. Like I mentioned, this week we have another installment of Ask Epic. Um, we're meeting every week to discuss all things EPIC. We want to provide new to EPIC families and returning families a place to learn about all the opportunities we have to offer. I am Carla Smitherman, and I'm with the EPIC development team. Yeah, and I'm Ashley Brown. I'm also from the EPIC development team. Happy to be here today. Hope you guys are excited. Um, you know, today we're going to be talking about some programs um, and clubs that we offer at EPIC. Uh, this is not all inclusive. This is not everything because unfortunately we don't have time. So the good news is there's going to be more coming, um, but we're excited to kind of dive in. You know, at EPIC, we recognize that a well-educated child, it's not just about a great curriculum and amazing teacher. Um, it's also about giving, creating a, a whole, a holistic student. So giving them opportunities and skills that can help them later on in life. And so part of that is finding your passion. And that's what I think is really exciting about some of these programs. It allows students to find their passion and turn it into real life skills. Um, and so we're lucky today, we have some guests with us to discuss some of these programs. Um, so if you guys don't mind, uh, I'm gonna introduce you. And if you don't mind just kind of telling us briefly who you're here representing today, and then we're uh, ready to get started. So let me see here. I'm just gonna look at who I see first. Caden, do you mind introducing yourself and telling us where you're from? Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Caden Hudson. I am in the Tulsa area and I'm the director of esports and game studies for Epic. Awesome. Excited to have you, Caden. Thank you. Welcome. Um, let me see who we have next. Uh, Elizabeth. Hello, I'm Elizabeth Stidham. I am with the Epic News Network. I'm a student journalism program specialist. I'm here in Tulsa, um, but we also have um, our director in Oklahoma City and statewide student news network program. Awesome. awesome. Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you for joining us. And let's see, last but not least, is that right, Jennifer? Hello, I'm Jen Robinson and I um, I live in Mustang and I also live at Foss Lake in Western Oklahoma, kind of back and forth. Um, I'm the Managing Director of Advanced Courses. So that's a lot of things like Gifted and Talented, STEAM, AP, Pre-AP, Esports, and I think I'm missing, oh, Music and Art. <laughs> Very good. Awesome. Thank you so much. I'm excited to have all of y'all here today. Um, so let me see, is there anything? All right, I think we're ready to dive in, right, Carla? Okay, yes, absolutely, Ashley. Um, I think, you know, just as Ashley mentioned, we've had so many families reach out to us and say, what can my child participate in EPIC? And boy, is this the time to share with them, right? We have the best opportunity today to share, and we're looking forward for them to talk about some of the things that they are very passionate about. Every one of them here today are very passionate about what they do. So we're excited for them to share. Um, and just to kind of go into what extracurricular, activ extracurricular activities are for and how important they are, I think Ashley did a great job of talking about it. Um, as parents, we all understand these activities help our students grow, what, like she mentioned. They develop our students' mind, body, and soul. They help them to learn outside skills like sharing, caring, competition, um, developing their minds in so many facets. So we're going to deep dive today, and again, we're going to talk about um, everything from esports to the Epic News Network and more. These are just a few of the organizations that Epic has to offer today. So again, we're, we're really excited. So let's dive right in with our first guest, Elizabeth. Elizabeth uh, represents Epic News Network team, our very, very um, just wonderful department that we are so excited about. And we can't wait for her to share to talk about this department. So Elizabeth, tell us more about your program. All right, thanks for having me on. I love talking about this department because this is a great way for students to find talents and skills and um, areas that they can succeed in. And it's really fun to see students who don't know that much about journalism or multimedia and then really find their niche and their calling. So I'll just tell you a few of the things that we do. So we offer classes 
Um, so there are virtual classes or we have a few online options or in-person options as well here in Tulsa, some in Oklahoma City, but any student that's in middle school or high school can enroll in our junior high clubs or we have the high school classes for credit. We also have a work study um, internship program. So lots of options. We offer classes in photography, video production. We have intro to journalism classes, audio production and podcasting. And then we also have desktop publishing. So one of the things that's really cool, some of you might have seen it, some of you have not, but we just produced our first student magazine, The Comet, that came out this spring. There'll be copies at a 50 pin and here in Tulsa, staff members got those, but we're gonna be doing two of these next year. But this is all student produced. So students took the photos for it. They wrote the articles, they did the interview. So it's really cool to have this really neat magazine that features Epic students and their writing and their stories. So that was really exciting. So two of those are coming out next year. So you can still be part of this class and this program. We also do a Monday morning newscast, our Epic News Network newscast on Mondays. Those are open for students to come to. You can either come here to the Tulsa office or the Oklahoma City office at 9 a.m. and you can help produce a student newscast that goes on the Epic News Network website. Um, so those are two of the big things. We help with family engagement departments, cooking shows, but lots of opportunities to get involved in multimedia. Awesome. That's so exciting. I think you guys do so many neat things. And I think one thing that I was shocked by, and maybe you can speak more on this, is the equipment that's available to these students. If you have an interest in, in these things, that they, you guys, we have some equipment that can be used, right? Yes. So I'm here in the Tulsa newsroom. So we have our background in the back back there that we shoot the newscast at. We have um, cameras. We have digital cameras, DSLR cameras for photography. We have our video equipment and tripods. And even students who are enrolled in our classes, if they need us to go meet them in Southeast Oklahoma to help them shoot a story, that's even something that we can do. So we really want our students all across the state to have access to the equipment and to be able to have hands-on opportunities. And my background's in journalism. I was a news reporter in Tulsa for several years, but when I was in college, I mean, I didn't have any of this equipment in high school. I know things have come a long way, but none of this in high school and even in college, like we didn't have the access to the programs like students have now. So the ability to actually do a student newscast and write a news publication as a high school or middle school student is really cool. So um, it's fun to see these students learn their skills so early. That is so awesome. I'm excited for the program. I know you probably don't want to brag, but I really want you to. Can you tell us a little about some of the awards you just recently received? Oh yeah, we so we compete every year at the um, OU Scholastic Media Competition. They have a fall and a spring event, and we always have students go to those events. But our student newscast got the best student newscast in the state this spring, so that was fantastic. Um, we had some really great, um, we had a second place video winner um with grace ann i think she was second place i'm trying to remember hold on they're in this magazine all the awards are right here uh, we had first place with jensen mckee she had a great um award so we had a lot of student journalists that get to submit their individual um submissions and they won some big awards for that so hopefully we'll just keep on keeping on it's great that epics represented so well well, we yeah. know you will do even better, even more to come. So we're excited for you. Thank you so much for sharing. Do you have any other questions for Ashley? Um, I did have, uh, I think, one or two more. If, if we have a student that's interested, let's say um, at the middle school level, you mentioned that in middle school, they can join it as a club almost. Mm -hmm. um, so how would a student, how do you recommend they get involved in that if they're interested? They can enroll through their um through their teacher or their GSS. So they'll just enroll in the class. We have the class schedule. Um, an invitation went out to students last month. Um, but okay. if you have questions, feel free to reach out to Phil Cross is our program director. You can reach out to me, Elizabeth Stidham, and we'll make sure we get you enrolled and in one of the classes. But the we're gonna do junior high clubs this year just to kind of expose students to the different areas. And then the high school students will be getting um, credit and. Um, having that count as a fine arts credit or even in some cases as the work study or next step credit. So it's a great way to knock out some classes and have fun doing it. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, at the end of the day, I think what's so cool about what you're doing is they're getting real life skills. You know, this could be a job, even if it's not necessarily as a news reporter, these are skills that we need. Um, and so I think that's so awesome. Um, and no, yeah, if you I was going to say so much, not everything is so technology driven. When I was in news mm -hmm. again, it was just for news, but now, you know, whether it's, you're doing videos, every company has social media, um, coordinators and has somebody making videos and producing graphics and doing the website. So all of this is really relevant skills for whatever industry you decide to go into. So absolutely. Yeah, That's absolutely. These are resume building. These are resume building <laughs> opportunities, right? <That's> right. <laughs> we love those. Yeah. Absolutely. Anyway, thank you so much. And I really, really love that it's middle school and high school. You cannot get students early enough developing those skills, right? Mm -hmm. And we had some great important. middle schoolers last year, some really talented ones. So it'll be fun to see how they progress all through high school. Absolutely. And so um, JC has a question. She wants to know how we enroll, which you kind of covered. Basically, they're just going to ask their teacher. Is that correct? They need to wait until they've been assigned a teacher to be able to enroll in these programs. Yeah. Yes, I believe awesome. so. That'd be the easiest way. And an invite went out. So you might check your email. Um, if you missed that and go back and look for the invitation to enroll that way, but otherwise talk to your teacher or email myself or Phil Cross. Um, awesome. Either one of us will be happy to help you out. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you. Oh. Did we answer all of our questions? Let me make sure that we are before we start with our next person. Uh, did we answer everything? I see someone has asked us, how do we enroll in these programs? Okay. Do we need to wait until we as are assigned a teacher? And um, I would say absolutely, as soon as your teacher, you have uh, enrolled with your teacher, that was the absolute time to bring out everything and anything you're interested in. And your teacher can assist you with that. So that is the answer to that question. Um, do they have basketball for seventh grade? I want to say that we will have to get back with you with that question because I'm, I'm not real sure. Uh, does anyone else on the call know how to answer that one? Yeah, I'm not sure on that basketball program. I know that there's okay. been some changes happening. So um, basketball is something we want to cover, but I know I my thought was we'll probably wait till we have a little more information. So if you don't mind, um, uh, and I don't even if you could drop us your email, uh, we could try to get that answer for you once we know a little more. Um, and then Good. I see Judah's question that Jeremy posted. That's a great question, Judah, and I'd love to get an answer for you. I'd love to have more of a one-on-one -on -one conversation for that. So if you could email us at edt at epiccharterschools.org, that would be great. Um, okay. Let's see. Corey is asking, is there esports for seventh grade? Um, I will go ahead and let Kaden, would you like to answer that question for us right now? And then we'll stop and start, let Jennifer start in a few minutes. Katie, um, can you answer that question for us? Yes, for that one specifically, yes, there is esports for seventh grade. Awesome. Okay, thank you very much. Let's see if we quite answered everything. Okay, who do we, Stephanie is asking, who do we reach out to if we have a new enrollee that needs an IEP review? Okay, so that was, that's a great question, Stephanie. I would love for you to uh, email us. Um, and we will be more than happy to get back with you and answer that question because I know that we'd love to uh, answer that for you. Okay. So yeah, um, I'm going to send I will her have, my email right now. Yes, Ashley is going to send you her information, and and then we will go ahead and get started in a few minutes. Um, by, uh, but anyway, but first of all, we want to make sure we thank Stephanie, I mean, Elizabeth, sorry, for all the information she just shared just now. That was great and exciting. And I know that Epic has been uh, really thrilled to have this program start and we just can't wait as a, a, a school district to see what this area is going to, uh, to strive for. So we're looking forward to great things. Yeah, thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you. Thanks for having us on. Okay, let's see. Um, I think next we have Jennifer Robinson, right? All right, thank you for having me. I want to ask Elizabeth a question. Can faculty hop in on those Monday morning uh, <laughs> news? <laughs> How can we be involved? That sounds fun. <laughs> Uh, the Monday one is mostly in person, but we do zoom in with Oklahoma City because Tulsa and Oklahoma City zoom in together. Okay. And it's just, we run it like a working news meeting. So we 
you know, come up with story ideas and then decide how we're going to format the show. And then the students go write the stories. So they get their good writing practice in and then they um, record and produce it all Very here. Cool. So yeah, it's Very fun. Cool. Very cool. I love That's what cool. Epic is doing for students. Um, my name is Jen Robinson. Um, I love when students come to me and say, hey, why don't we have this at our school? And I love trying to figure out how we can make that happen. And that leads into some of the things that we offer in the advanced courses department. It's a lot. And so I'm just going to cover four today. And one of those was mock trial. A student came to me last year and said, I really want to participate. And so we got some volunteer teachers and the kids just came flooding in to, to join mock trial. And what mock trial is, um, it's only for students in grades nine through 12. We don't have a middle school. We have nine through 12. And students, they take on the role of being an attorney or being a plaintiff or a defendant. And they cover a case. They actively prepare that case. They work with a teacher. And then we have a lot of volunteer attorneys that help our teams. Um, prepare for the mock trial. And uh, once they get to that mock trial, they're heard by real judges in a courtroom setting and really practice those, you know, the confidence, your speaking skills, um, your self-esteem, your teamwork. Um, I really love what this, this program does for students with public speaking skills and, you know, sharpens your reading comprehensions too, because there's a lot of studying involved on that case. So that's what mock trial is, if you're interested in that. Registration has not gone out yet. We will be sending out information for those who would like to register in grades nine through 12. Um, so be looking for that if you're inter interested in mock trial. You can also email me and I'll give you uh, more information. Uh, another one I'd like to cover is STEAM Club. That was so successful this year. We have uh, Ben Finkbeiner is our STEAM director. Uh, he leads those clubs. And what STEAM stands for, if you're unsure, it used to be called STEM and sometimes it's still STEM STEAM. Um, it's science, technology, engineering, art, and math. It's kind of that combo of all of those cool things. And so the uh, those are for students uh, in elementary school, middle school, and high school. So we have an opportunity for everyone to be involved in those STEAM clubs. That information will be coming out soon. We're getting volunteer teachers for that and getting all the content ready so you can do those hands-on activities uh, for those clubs. And you can reach out to me or Ben Finkbeiner if you want more information on STEAM club. Um, another one that is near and dear to my heart because I love to write poetry is Poetry Out Loud. Uh, it keeps growing every year. I have a lot of students uh, that want to do more than Poetry Out Loud, which I'm excited about. But what Poetry Out Loud is, um, it's a course that you take with one of our teachers and you'll pick several poems and study those, memorize them and recite them. Uh, we'll have a big uh, competition, a school-wide competition, and then we had someone go to state this year. Um, and so that it's also a program that helps build your public speaking skills and build your self-confidence while also learning about literary history and contemporary life. So I, that's Poetry Out Loud. Uh, registration is not out for that yet either. Uh, we're not there yet, but if you want more information about it or you want a heads up and start looking at the poems, reach out to me and I'll put my e uh, email in the chat there. That is for students in grade nine through 12 as well, uh, as stipulated by the Poetry Out Loud Foundation. And lastly, I'm trying to go fast, I'm sorry. Lastly, we also started Comet Coders last year, which um, is a club, several clubs for students to learn how to build websites, um, make video games and apps, create animations, and so much more as technology advances. I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of AI stuff in there. So we don't have registration for that either. There are several cohorts, middle school, and or elementary, middle school and high school. So there's also an opportunity for all there. So if you're interested in coding and learning more about that, reach out to me as well. I'll be sending out information on how to enroll, how to register uh, coming soon. Thank These you so are much, all Jennifer. awesome. These are wonderful. I have the biggest question I know that a lot may be ask, or asking out there is, can you tell us are the meetings in person or are they virtual? Okay, that's but, a great question. And I'm sure that Probably, I don't know if everyone, you can tell us about each one or just okay. overall. 
Yeah, that that's a great question. Um, some so I'll start with mock trial. That's definitely in person. You, you know, you've got to meet as a team and collaborate. Now, there were some instances where if a student had, you know, a, a prior engagement, we could zoom you in. But typically you want to meet um, as a team in person. And so once I get those enrollments in, I'll geographically map out each student and find out where that in-person meeting will be. So that's mock trial. Uh, what was the next one? STEAM Club is also in person in the OKC area and in the uh, Tulsa area, but we're uh, currently working on some live events, some virtual events as well, because we know uh, a lot of students want those virtual options. Uh, Comet Coders is vir uh, virtual only right now. Uh, with some meetups, they try to meet up so the kids can get to know each other because we do like that in person as well. But the curriculum and going through the course is virtual. And Poetry Out Loud is mostly virtual as we're working through those poems and memorizing them. You just attend class virtually, but then the competition pieces are in person. All right, awesome. thank you. I think we have some questions here. Thank you yeah. so much for, for that. Um, I know that that was something huge that I knew a lot of people would be asking. Um, <laughs> I think what, one of the questions we have, and I will go back to Corey Combs, so uh, we'll get back with you, Jennifer, but for Caden, um, can you ask, sir, do we have eSports for third grade? Corey Combs Jr. has asked us that question. I am so glad that question was asked because the answer is yes. I am happy to announce we finally have esports for some of our younger grades. We actually start in third grade and make our way all the way up to 12th grade. Wow, that's good. Hey, we've got, I think every third grade parent wants to know that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's exciting. I had no idea. So that's a big announcement, I feel like, Caden, because I've never heard that before. So like, drum roll, please. That's very exciting. Um, hey, Jennifer, I have a question for you. JC's wondering, do we have a chess club or is there any way for us to start one? That's a great question. So we did have a chess meetup this year that was really fun. And that really got the kids involved in wanting a chess club. So yes, it's in the works. We just got to get to planning. Awesome. And so do you feel like the best way, it sounds like from what I'm hearing, the best way to kind of get this information is to watch your email, right? Is that where a lot of this uh, the, this information is coming from? Yep. Awesome. Yep. That's your email. Yeah, we're currently in the, we're hurrying up and planning right now. <laughs> awesome. That's exciting. Okay. We have a very good question. I think this is an outstanding question that uh, someone is asking is, where can students and found and families find a comprehensive list of all of the extracurricular options available at EPIC. And, and I know for a fact that they are listed on our website. I can say that for sure. If you go to our website, and we have a wonderful new website, if you all agree with that. Uh, and if you uh, take a look and you just kind of click around, and if you click under organizations, you can see a list of all of the organizations that are available to you. So I hope that answers that question. Yeah, I Let think if you see. click student, student life maybe, or student something, there's a club, one that says organizations and one that says programs, and there's a lot there. Um, but again, like as we just saw, like with Jennifer saying about chess, there's new stuff happening all the time. So, um, you know, really, really pay attention. Something that I think, I mean, I'm guilty of it as well. I get a million emails a day, but I think we all can miss out on things because if you've got something that your student's interested in, um, it could just happen that you're, that email, you miss it that day. So it's really important that you make a point to go back and look through all those epic emails. I know there's a lot, I, I can agree, <laughs> but, um, but there's some good stuff happening in there and you don't ever want to miss um, a deadline. JC, you're not getting any emails. Good. Are you are you a new student? Are you new to Epic JC or have you been there previously? That would be my first question. New. Okay. okay. So I think I could be wrong and somebody on here might know, but I think that you'll probably start getting those emails with the start of the school year. But um, that's a good question. I might you might e send us send us an email at edt at epiccharterschools.org and I can find out for sure just to make sure you're yes. not missing anything. And thank you, Jennifer. She just gave us the link. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Appreciate you. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, well, we need to go ahead and move along and, yes. and get started with Mr. Caden now. Yes. Um, and go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I'm not going to lie, Caden. I was really excited that you were here. Um, you know, Epic has been doing some of the, the new YouTube videos promoting different things. 
and y'all the esports video and this is maybe embarrassing to admit i like i got a little teary watching that like the camaraderie of it and like it's it's so new and exciting that was not around when i was a kid i just thought this is the coolest program and i'm like i'm truly so excited to learn more about it so thank you kaden for being here today um i'd love to hear you know just hear what you guys are up to and what you offer yeah, absolutely. And so I'll, I'll try to work through it as, as fast as I can. There was one question that I did see came directly to me oh, in the chat. And I think okay. it's one that I think everyone probably wants to answer to. And the question was, is is it typical for schools to offer esports to third graders? And the answer is actually yes. We're actually one of about 40 other schools in the state of Oklahoma that offer esports to younger grades. And I'll kind of touch into that here in a little bit, but I wanted to go ahead and get that out there that yes, that is, while Epic is very proud of it, that's one of the things that we are happy to do because it kind of catches us up to everybody else. Um, so with that being said, again, I am the director of esports and game studies here at Epic Charter Schools. I am also the head varsity coach for our Epic Varsity team, which is probably what all of you guys see on Instagram and on the different social medias. Um, and to just touch briefly about that, that is an offer that we actually have in person um, that is currently available for high schoolers 9 through 12. Next semester, we're going to start to field one middle school team just to kind of test the waters and see where those where those titles fall out. Um, so kind of be on the lookout for that. But we will have some information for in the meantime. Um, our varsity program consists of about six to seven titles that are played across all year in both semesters. And with that, kind of the things that these kids do is um, they try out just like any other varsity team. If you're aware of how baseball or soccer works, you usually have to try out when there's so many kids that are interested. And so with that, we kind of go through a tryout process. If you make the team, um, you do get a jersey, which this is our jerseys. Um, and once a month, we go and compete in tournaments. And at the end of the season, we hopefully have a good enough winning record to make it to state. Last year, being our inaugural year um, at the state level, we actually had every single title qualify for state. So to kind of put in that perspective, it's like if a school that had uh, that had traditional sports, if every single sport qualified for state, that's kind of like what we pulled off. It was phenomenal. We were the only school to ever do it in our first year. Um, we, were, we were the only second school in Oklahoma history to ever pull that off ever anyway. And so it was a really awesome accomplishment. Um, and with that, we actually had two of those teams come out with state titles, which uh, I actually happened to get, get these in just in, in the nick of time. But these are our state rings, if it'll focus a little bit. Oh, wow. There we go. So, yeah, those are our state rings that we got for one of the titles. The other ones are coming in. Um, and we compete both in person and online. Again, just kind of depends on the tournament um, at hand. Um, but a few of the accolades just from that side of things. Um, again, two state championships. We placed fourth nationally in one of our titles. And then we placed fourth internationally in a title where it was United States, Canada, Mexico, and Europe. And so we are constantly competing all year, um, essentially since the start of school to up until I think the second to last month of school. So the last month is kind of when everything winds down, but all year these kids are competing and practicing and putting their best foot forward to represent Epic. Um, the other offers that we have, because again, the varsity team can only take so many kids, what we've actually built and established are some other things like curriculum. So if you want to learn more about esports and maybe like what would a future look like in esports, what kind of job could I get in the esports industry? We have a curriculum in place, everything from interactive media to shout casting um, to even learning just the broad scope of like what what jobs are even available. Because you'd be you'd be surprised how many people didn't realize that you need to have an accountant for an esports organization. You need to have an HR person to hire for developers. So like all of these titles or all of these like different little jobs that have always existed still exist in esports, but they just have a small, you know, turn of the knob of what makes them a little bit different. Um, and then finally, we have our community, which our community is known as Epic Games Day. And what that is, is that once a month, the kids come together, they compete. We have a couple of titles that are mainstays like Minecraft um, and Rocket League, where kids kind of come and they either compete against each other, just other Epic students, or they have like a collaborative adventure, like Minecraft is a really good one. It's actually an adventure-based um type of system to where you get grouped up in small pairs and a staff member is kind of overseeing they give you objectives and as a group you complete objectives in a random world of minecraft and at the very end everyone comes together to take down the ender dragon um, we actually did that and we had about i believe one of the servers had just over 45 kids in it um and a kind of kind of put, if you can kind of paint this picture 45 epic students dropping in to take down a big dragon and the first kid that said that i'm going to do this by myself had to get caught by four of his teammates because he got thrown off the edge. And so it was an amazing experience. It was a really fun opportunity. And it took it took the better part of an afternoon just to set up for the event. So um, with esports, the one thing that we always want to try to promote is um, one, inclusivity, and then two, just a safe space to come together and just play. Um, with school, you know, we understand that 
we sometimes we get caught up in a lot of the things that have to go on just in a normal school day, even as administrators and, and as staff members. And so being able just to share that experience is something that we're very proud of. And we want to make sure that everyone is welcome to come. And so if you want to get involved in any way, please feel free to reach out and we'll make sure we find a home for you. That is wow. wonderful. That's... So exciting. Yeah. Uh, Kaden, I have to tell you, I had a student that was a part of eSports and he had a phenomenal time. Just one question I have for you, what kind of time commitment would it take for students to participate? So that's where we've tried to build out as many different options as possible to make sure we try to fit around your schedule. And that's why I always encourage people to reach out so we can find a home for you. Um, because if you're someone's like, hey, I want to only do this every now and then, go join our Epic Games Club then. find our, well, I'll give you our calendar and just find the events that you want to go to because they're not going to go anywhere. And if you don't show up, no harm, no foul. But if you do, you're going to have a great time. Um, if you want to be someone that's a little bit more serious, um, then I suggest looking into not only the Epic Games Club, but maybe really looking into some of our other extracurriculars. We have um, different vendor partners where if kids don't make the varsity team or maybe the varsity team is a little bit too much commitment, they can go to these other leagues that Epic kind of helps with the learning fund with to go and compete there. Um, actually, a lot of my kids go to these these different teams in the off season. And so that's something to where if it's like, hey, I can do two nights a week for practice in a, in a match. OK, we have a place for you. And then at the very top, like the most time commitment is the varsity team, because just like a traditional sport, you know, you practice every day in football, Monday through Friday. Well, esports, you're going to be practicing Monday through Friday. We have a set schedule. You know, we, we know who we're going to be playing week to week or month to month. And so that has the most time commitment because it is a true varsity sport here. That sounds wow. wonderful. Okay, I think we have a question. Uh, this says, do you guys do Smash Brothers for middle school? Did you say that there was a tryout requirement for middle school also? So, uh, yes, we will We will have Smash Brothers for middle school. However, there is a little asterisk there because it depends on which program you're in. Again, if you're in the Epic Games Club, no tryouts. It's just everyone comes. So if you want to play Smash Brothers, just come in once a month, play Smash Brothers with some of the rest of us. Um, however, if you want to be on the varsity team for middle school. Yes, there is a tryout process and that'll be coming around in the spring. And so would you say, Kaden, uh, people that want to get involved, whether it be on the the game, the sorry, the club option or more so on the varsity team, how do they get involved there? What's their next step if they want to? So their next step is definitely once they if they know who their teacher is or once they get assigned a teacher, have their teacher reach out to me. Um, because again, it, it takes a lot of like trying to figure out where you where you stand, what kind of time commitment are you looking at, and really what are you wanting to do with with esports and game studies. Um, because again, with different offers, I'm kind of like with Elizabeth. There's actually something that I'm really glad she mentioned. Um, we have some internships as well that you can take through our esports program, where you can be a community manager, you can be our Discord manager, and you can be a team manager. And those are just skills that you will have that aren't directly you're not playing a game, but you're still in the esports industry and space. Um, and so little things like that, that I'll know, you know, if you have something of interest at all, then just let me know and we'll definitely find a home for you. I think it's so great that you're really um, kind of showing everybody that these are transferable skills. Back growing up, we were told video games, you've got to go and do something, you know, you can't just play video games all day. But the truth is now and through your program, you're like really funneling kids into developing these transferable skills that are used someday in a job. Um, and I think I think it was covered in the video, like there are students getting scholarships for this now, That's correct? Right. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> that was something I actually forgot to mention. Um, this last season, um, five of our seven seniors received college scholarships to go play esports wow. at the next level. And so again, even, even in that, just that little space, um, you can get college scholarships. One of our students actually had a dual scholarship where they were offered to be a player and a caster for the rest of the team for the school. And so she was a very, very fortunate that she was able to not only get one, but two scholarships from the same school. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that's just great. I mean, it's just something that the world is changing so fast. And one thing that you can count on at Epic is that we're, we're going to try to keep up with what's going on. And, and, and so this is, it's brand new. Like this was not around maybe even five years ago. I don't know, right. but now it is. And we're on the forefront of it. We have state champions. I mean, it's really just so amazing. Yeah, so it, it is, it is exciting. It's very exciting. So I, I just will say thank you so much, Caden, for telling us more about this program. I just I know that there's going to be so many, many more opportunities and so many more exciting stories you're going to have to be able to share with us. Um, so and also I need to circle back to Jennifer because I wanted to say this to you. There are so many more organizations that I know we're going to have to have you back on to share with us on. I don't know if you would like to type 
type some of those in the chat box or how you'd like to share some of those. But we know that there's uh, just a plethora of options that you have. And these are all phenomenal programs that are, our students might be interested in. So we want to make sure that we want to let folks know that there's many, many more out there that you are a part of and um, our students can take can participate. Yes, I'll, I'll, as, drop those, I'll drop those in the chat for you and I'm happy okay. to come back too, whichever way. Thank you. I appreciate that so much. Thank you. I mean, I guess for everybody today from Elizabeth uh, to Caden um, to Jennifer, thank you all so much for sharing. These are just so exciting programs for our students. Um, these students can learn everything from critical thinking skills, communication skills, and just plain fun, right? <laughs> I mean, our students are working so hard every day with Epic, and it's so fun to be able to allow them this opportunity to socialize with other students their age and also to be able to have fun and compete. So um, I just love that we have all these opportunities for them. Ashley, can you think of any other questions we might want to ask any of our guests? Or guests, do you have anything else you'd like to share? I was yeah. going to say we're always looking for story ideas for our epic news program and for the magazine. I mean, I've already been writing down since admin okay. retreat things in Jennifer's department and esports things we need to do some stories on and some great student stories. So um, that's the other thing. Like if you know a cool student doing something cool, if you know a teacher doing something really cool, always um, feel free to reach out with those story ideas too. Oh, so yeah. I want to talk Thank you. all the yeah. cool things happening at epic. Um, I do think Jeremy offered um, to play the esports video. For those of you that haven't seen it, it really is a good one. I don't know why. I just I think all these videos are so great. So um, I'd love if you have more questions, uh, it, drop them in the chat box. But if if we want to, uh, I'll finish up, and then uh, Jeremy's going to play that little video for those of you that want to stick around and watch. It's really great and really inspiring. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much for being here today. Thank you to our guests again for taking time out of your day. Um, I hope that those of you at home are having a great summer and enjoying, uh, let's see, it's not raining today, so that's nice. Maybe we're done with the rain for a few days. Um, so yeah, thank you so much. Next week, let's see, next week, yes. Um, we're gonna be back again Wednesday at two, and we're gonna be talking about some common uh, issues that people might have when they're enrolling, common barriers that they might run into, and, and kind of how to work through those, and kind of just doing a general Q&A for anything that you that kind of hits your brain. So I hope you guys can join us for that. I hope you gained something to, I feel like I learned a lot today, and so I hope those of you at home did as well. I think the most important lesson here is you've got to really plug in, because Epic is doing so many great things for our students, and it's easy. It's There's a lot to know, and so it's easy to miss. So really try to plug in, watch your email, connect, you know, it's, there's, there's, it's such a wide network, but just connect with somebody. And we're always happy. I know myself, my team with the development team, um, probably those of you on today, the guests, everybody's willing to help you find where you need to be. So just say, hey, I'm interested. And uh, we're happy to help get you where you need to be. Um, but if you still have awesome. questions or you're, there's more programs you want to learn about, please reach out to us. Our email is edt at epiccharterschools.org, um, and we'd yeah. be happy to, to help you. Very good. And I'm going to go ahead and read off these amazing other organizations that Jennifer listed for us because I think they're just wonderful. Uh, that she, She's mentioned the mock trial, Girls Who Code, Comment Coders. She, she's already discussed the STEAM Club. Pre-Health Science Club, 3D Printing Club, Epic Games Club, Engineering Club, and of course she mentioned Port out loud. So as you can see, you have many opportunities to plug in somewhere with Epic. And I agree with a Ashley. We just have some amazing opportunities for our families and students. And as Ashley mentioned, enrollment is still going on. We don't want you to miss out. Please make sure if you have enrolled, please do so. We want to make sure that you have a smooth transition this year. Um, hate to tell you this little secret, school is starting in August. <laughs> so we want to make sure that you don't miss out and uh, go ahead and jump in and get started with us. So if you have any questions, we'll be more than happy to help you out. So if you have not enrolled, just let us know. 
anyway, thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for, for our guests. You all were amazing. Uh, and come back next week for Ask Ask Epic. Epic. And <laughs> stick around. Stick around if you want to yeah, watch the around. esports video. Okay. Have a great day, everybody. It's Duffy, come on, go, let's go. Epic has been involved in esports for a little over a year, but this is the first year that we've decided to kind of branch out and go compete against other schools, both statewide and nationally. Get him, get him, get him. Something Oklahoma does really well is creating these environments that are in person. It adds an extra element of excitement. It's definitely cool being able to drive somewhere that's not your home come with friends and teammates. My girl, let's go, bro. We have jumped headfirst into esports to be able to create opportunities for kids. To me, esports is about inclusivity. People need to be more social, I guess. So like, or how to talk around people that you don't know. What's really unique about Epic is we have kids all across the state. And so this is one of those opportunities that the kids all come in person to see one another. Being able to find people who enjoy something similar to me and play with them, it's just nice and gives me something to focus on when I'm not doing schoolwork. The cognitive ability that you get from esports is extremely beneficial, but even so much so of things like math, social skills, communication, things that are what we call soft skills in the game that you continually improve as you work with your team. There's so many different post-secondary opportunities that are being created. I found out I got a scholarship opportunity and I was like, what? You can get scholarships for this? And I was, I was blown away from that. We've done extremely well from state champions, national placers, state placers, and then even some individual player awards like national MVP. It's fun being able to have people around me that want to improve as themselves and also the opportunity to represent my school. I'm just excited for this weekend and ready to bring home some championships. Walk up with me, walk up with me. Close. On site, on site, on site. Oh, 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 oh. The ending gets me every time. <laughs> okay, thank you guys so much for joining us today. Uh, come back next week. Thank you again to our guests and thank you, Jeremy, for playing that video for us. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye. See you later.